The city of Glasgow is the largest in Scotland, and its contribution to the First World War cannot be overstated. One fifth of its population, over 200,000 men, were mobilised during the conflict, and many others contributed to the war effort in the shipyards and factories. After the war, Glasgow wanted to commemorate its war dead and the contribution made by the city, and the focus of that remembrance is the cenotaph in George Square. An imposing monument which dominates the square, this is the story of how it came to be. Like many towns and cities throughout Britain, Glasgow wanted a way to properly commemorate its war dead, and a number of suggestions and proposed designs were put forward. In a letter to the Glasgow Herald on the 31st of December 1918, Glaswegian architect John Kepi suggested a monumental bridge over the River Clyde positioned near St Enoch's Square, with a war monument at its centre. Another more radical design suggested a memorial way stretching from the village of Balloch in western Bartonshire through the city and reaching to Hamilton Palace, along which communities could place their own memorials. Many locations within the city were suggested such as Queen's Park, St Enoch's Square, Cathedral Square, as well as a suggested new square to be built off Suckey Hall Street, which would then be renamed Victory Street. George Square was a popular choice, and the architects Malcolm Stark and John C. T. Murray suggested a memorial hall be placed in the centre of the square, a proposal which, if it had gone forward, would have left a drastically different location to that which we recognise today. The city enlisted several notable architects to submit designs, but in the end, a cenotaph design by Sir John James Burnett, flanked by sculptures of lions designed by Ernest Killick, was chosen to be the city's memorial. The final location chosen was indeed George Square, in a position directly in front of the city chambers, the local government building which was built in 1889. The unveiling of the cenotaph was carried out by Errol Haig on the 31st of May 1924, in front of a crowd of around 100,000 people. The Glasgow Herald stated that the ceremony at George Square on Saturday was in some ways the most impressive that has taken place in the centre of Glasgow's civic life. It was a spontaneous expression of profound emotion of all classes of the community. Initially the memorial had planned to include a vault which would contain the names of those from the city who had fallen, but concerns over the safety of having a sunken vault seven feet below the square led to its removal at the planning stage, and the names of the war dead would be displayed in another way. That method of display, together with how the names were obtained, is another story worth telling. The Corporation of Glasgow had been quick to organise the compiling of the names of the war dead, as a committee to arrange for the preparation of a roll of honour had been set up in the autumn of 1915 when the war was only a year old. The committee had first tried to obtain the names from the military authorities, but that had proved impractical, so the town clerk Sir John Lindsay and his assistant Mr J.G. G. Elliot contacted businesses, churches, places of education and other boards and public bodies within the city requesting from them the details of the names associated with them who had fallen up to that point. From this, a basic register was obtained, and with the addition of names and information gleaned from the casualty reports in newspapers, they were able to compile a working roll. After the war had concluded, a proof copy of the roll was exhibited for two months in the city libraries, and the public were given the opportunity to supply additional names or submit corrections. In this way, a roll of almost 18,000 names was compiled, and the roll was then bound and put on display in the entrance of the city chambers, close to the location of the cenotaph. The roll lists the names, ranks and units together with the addresses of all the fallen. No awards of distinction or valour were included in the roll. The compilers at the time agreed that they were unable to verify these, and it was decided that rather than note them in some case but not others, instead they would be omitted entirely. At the time, the introduction to the roll of honour stated, that this was a wise decision will be conceded by those who reflect that the role is mainly one, not of professional warriors, but of peace-loving citizens, who, called to arms by a great national peril, bore, each and all, their stern ordeal with an equal measure of courage and constancy. The compilers were aware at the time that the role was, in their words, by no means put forward as necessarily containing all the names entitled to a place on it. Over the years, families have come forward with names which they justifiably felt should have been included. A copy of the Roll of Honour is held at the Mitchell Library in Glasgow, and in recent years research has been undertaken, with the assistance of the Scottish Military Research Group, to amend and add to the original Roll of Honour. While this work is still ongoing, many more names have been added and continue to be added. If you'd like to know more, or have details you'd like to be included, please use the links in the description of this video.
At the end of the First World War, in November 1918, a feeling of celebration and relief spread throughout the victorious nations, and in Glasgow it was described as the greatest day of rejoicing Glasgow has ever known. Since its unveiling in 1924, people throughout the city and beyond have congregated at the Cenotaph to pay tribute to the fallen, and the original intention to provide a permanent reminder of those who died can be seen to have been achieved through the continued use of the monument as the focus for the city's remembrance. We hope you found this interesting, and if you did, please let us know by liking this video or commenting below. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please let us know and subscribe to our channel to make sure you don't miss out on future videos. Thank you for watching.